I grew up in a pediatrician's uh, home, and uh, I certainly uh, um, followed the passion uh, that my father had. He'd come and tell me about uh, these amazing stories of where a child who'd been on the brink of death uh, recovered, and just this tremendous uh, sense of joy and satisfaction that that gave him. And so I think the decision to go into medicine was made very early. It was like the like second week of uh, grade three. My arm was hurting really, really bad, so my teacher called my mom. My mom took me here, and then I got blood work, and then I got a bone marrow test, which is where they um, put you to sleep, and they put a needle in your back and take out like a little bit of your bone marrow. And then they found out that I had um, AML leukemia, it's like a very intense cancer that you have to have treatment straight for nine months of chemo therapy. A child never asks to be sick. A child never asks to live in a location. A child doesn't determine how serious or grave their issue is. And in our society, our values say that children deserve to be cared for. And that's the basis for our foundation support. We focus on the last line of defense for kids who are the sickest. And by doing that, we are taking care of those kids where they cannot go anywhere else. We attract individuals, technologies, and skills that support the sickest of the sick kids. That expertise filters all the way down and benefits all kids that come to the Stollery. This is what makes a children's hospital. It's the, the people that are there, it's the passion, it's their interest, it's their knowledge, it's their skill, it's their experience. It's essential for centers to be able to allow their trainees or their staff to go somewhere else, gain an experience and come back. Uh, the opportunity of being in Boston and training a Boston Children's Hospital was excellent because it's a large center and at the forefront of medicine. Uh, one of the things that I was able to bring back was the ability to do the procedures where we study the electrical activity inside the heart. Typical electrophysiology study in a pediatric patient would require 20 to 30 minutes of uh, radiation exposure and now we can do it anywhere between zero to five minutes. As much as possible, we try to access whatever evidence, whatever knowledge is out there to try to improve the work that we do. Unfortunately, within pediatric critical care, evidence is often lacking. And fortunately, with the help of the foundation, we're able to pursue the research questions that will help strengthen our evidence. I got very interested in my undergraduate years at MIT in solving problems in general. The Women's and Children's Health Research Institute is funded by the Stollery Children's Hospital Foundation. WICRI played an integral role in recruiting me here to University of Alberta, providing startup funds for getting my research going. Then they provide additional infrastructure to allow clinical research studies and clinical trials to be undertaken here. Research is really the future of healthcare. If we worked in an environment without the foundation, we would not have the technologies that keep us at the cutting edge. We wouldn't have the physical space developed to the extent that we do. We would not be among the best in North America without the foundation. We depend on them in every way. I would probably say thank you so much because when I had to stay in um, the, my room because of the chemo you can't leave, some of the donors, there's like this thing where you can put your blankets in to keep them warm and it helps a lot. The budget of the hospital is around $140 million and that comes through the taxpayers, uh, through the provincial government, and then through to Alberta Health Services. And that's great because it's important to invest in children's health. But above and beyond that support, our donors believe the children, they deserve even more. They deserve excellence. So when people say to me, well, you have enough money, I'm like, we don't have enough money because every time we don't raise a dollar, that's another time that we're not able to help some family, some child get that extra little boost to have that care or that research or that piece of equipment that will make the difference. We're taking care of the, the sickest kids throughout all of Western Canada and they deserve the best. 
I think our families need the support of the Children's Hospital at a time when they are at their most vulnerable. Donations to the Stollery Children's Hospital help enable us to provide the best care quality and to support families and children during uh, their acute care illnesses. One of the biggest challenges facing us at the Stollery is um, our space constraints. Um, as the demand for services grow, um, we need additional space in order to provide the care. Uh, not everybody is aware that we are a hospital within a hospital. So if you look at services across the Stollery, we have services that are provided on the uh, fourth floor, on the third floor, on the second floor, and on the main floor of the University of Alberta Hospital site. And so we are constrained for space and there is a real opportunity for us to expand and to continue with the capital redevelopment. A sick child doesn't just impact a sick child. It impacts parents, grandparents. There are people that are coming from small towns and other communities that have to stop everything. Because when your child is sick, everything does stop. Fraser it kind of was a special case because he was born here at the Stollery. He'd never left here. When Fraser, uh, he had a stroke, so he was no longer eligible for a heart transplant. We went to um, a DNR situation with him and when the doctor asked if there was anything I wanted to do with him, I didn't even really, like I didn't think about it. I just said, I'd love to take him outside. After I said it, I, I really didn't think it would actually ever happen. How would they take this critically ill baby who was on a respirator, who had, I think at the time, 10 different medications going into him, two big medical poles, like, how, how would you take him outside? And within two days, they had it worked out. We pushed him down through the cafeteria, out, out a door, and we took him outside. And when they said it was probably time to turn around and head back in, even though that morning we had said, you know, it won't be today that we discontinue his care. that it wouldn't be that day that we discontinued care. Once we had him outside, we knew it was the right spot. And so we had the doctor remove, it, remove his breathing tube outside and he got to breathe fresh air and see the trees and the beautiful bright blue sky. And we spent the rest of the day with him outside on the grass. And that's what family-centered care is. Families are vital partners um, when it comes to the delivery of uh, uh, care to the children here at the Stollery. A child grows up in a family, a child is nurtured, is protected, is mentored, is loved by the, uh, the family. And so the moment a child comes into the hospital, we can't push all of that aside and say, okay, we're going to look after this now. So it's what brought us to, to do the volunteering so that we could give back for all of the services that we received, as well as trying to make things better for the people who are coming after us. When a child is sick, it impacts everyone. It impacts parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, brothers and sisters. And so what I love about the foundation is that we're dedicated to providing excellence within the hospital, but with this context of the family being the center of all. The most rewarding part of my job is to see a child come into this hospital extraordinarily sick, and then fast forward when it's time for the child to leave, to actually have the child come back to the ICU and shake her hands or smile and look at us and to see the relief in the family's eyes. You never know what the potential is inside every child. And so when we enable at the foundation through the investments that our donors make to make a difference in excellence, when we enable that potential to come out, I feel like we're really making a difference, not in our community, but in the entire world. I like going on stage and everybody watching you and the lights, you know, and the little stage fright you get. Well, my mom just put me in it when I was little, when I was like three. Um, and I just kept on going until I was six, and then when I was eight, I was gonna quit. And then I had cancer, and then after cancer, and I, I loved it now. It's, it's a privilege. It is an absolute privilege. And just as I saw the uh, emotion, the passion, and the joy in my father, who practiced pediatrics until he was 82, uh, it's an honor. It, 
there's nothing better than seeing health return to somebody where that health and that, uh, that existence was uh, at risk. And so uh, there is no greater uh, privilege in my view uh, than, uh, than that of being a doctor.